This is an ACU Centre for Liturgy podcast. Speaking of liturgy. Liturgical formation has been a major preoccupation for the Church since the 1970s. But how effective has this formation been? Speaking of liturgy, Sister Kathleen Hughes, former Professor of Word and Worship, Catholic Theological Union, Chicago, and Provincial of the United States Province of the Society of the Sacred Heart, poses this question. Professor Claire Johnson, Director of the ACU Centre for Liturgy, describes how Sister Kathleen invites us to consider a different approach. One day not so long ago, Kathleen Hughes, the author of Saying Amen, Entering into the Mystery of the Sacraments, gave a presentation on the Eucharist to a few hundred people in a parish setting. As she was talking through the key moments of the celebration, a hand went up mid-audience. Besides you, who knows this stuff, was the question. Lots of nervous laughter came from the audience. But that provocative question lingers. Kathleen invites us all to ponder, who knows this stuff? The reform of the liturgy is now well into middle age, having begun in 1963 with the publication of the Constitution on the Sacred Liturgy and continuing into the mid-70s with the revision of every major sacrament. Over these many years, and despite numerous strategies employed to form assemblies in its contours and inner meaning, Kathleen laments that the liturgy remains inscrutable for many. Diocesan letters, parish programs, study days, bulletin inserts, All manner of formation possibilities have been employed, but often they attract those already formed and eager for more. Meanwhile, the number of those attending Sunday worship continues to decline, abetted by the COVID pandemic which gave all of us permission to stay home. Liturgical formation is on the mind of Pope Francis. He wrote a splendid letter on the topic in the northern summer of 2022 called Desiderio Desideravi. Desiderio Desideravi is a meditation to rekindle our wonder for the beauty of the truth of the Christian celebration, to remind us of the necessity of an authentic liturgical formation, and to recognise the importance of an art of celebrating that is at the service of the truth of the Paschal Mystery and of the participation of all of the baptised in it, each one according to her or his vocation. This letter is well worth praying over. It is filled with thought-provoking reflections about our worship. Kathleen's disappointment is that, as in so many documents of its kind, It concludes by suggesting that seminary formation and really excellent presiding need to be the linchpins of formation. Leave it to the clergy. She is no longer satisfied with that approach. She proposes a new formation strategy, one addressed to all of us, one that will reach the maximum number of people, one that will engage both mind and heart one that might even revitalise the Sunday Assembly. She asks, what if we decided that for a whole year, the focus of the Sunday homily was the Eucharist itself? This is a possibility that is included in the general instruction of the Roman Missal number 65. What if, over the course of the year, the homilist walked through the Eucharist slowly, thoughtfully, poetically, exploring the words, gestures and objects of the Eucharist in a way that touches our hearts and nourishes our spirits. What if the homilist prepared these reflections with the help of a rotating group of thoughtful parishioners who would ponder together the way this particular element of the liturgy discloses to us something about ourselves and something about God's invitation to us to become what we celebrate. What if we used the language of poetry rather than prose, the language of mystagogical reflection, 
for it seems to her that all of us in the pews are post-Eastern neophytes in need of reflecting on our experience. How does a procession evoke the journey into God that we have undertaken? What are the many kinds of silence and why are they important in the right? How do we make familiar language come alive? How do the postures of our prayer illuminate for us what we are doing? Do we really mean it each time we say Amen? Take that word Amen. It's a modest word, a frequent response but packed with meaning, as teased out in this poem from Barbara Schmick Searle. Amen. Be careful of simple words said often. Amen makes demands like an unrelenting schoolmaster, fierce attention to all that is said. No apathy, no preoccupation, no prejudice permitted. Amen. We are present. We are open. We are of one mind. We understand. Here we are, listening to your word. That was Professor Claire Johnson outlining Sister Kathleen Hughes's invitation to consider a different approach to liturgical formation. The ACU Centre for Liturgy, which provides pastoral formation in liturgy across Australia and beyond, is pleased to provide this podcast, Speaking of Liturgy. Liturgy.